Hey, what's going on, YouTube? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the Brotherhood of Essential Trades. Or a broster, <laughs> for short. I know that may sound a little lame, a little adolescent, a little childish, but uh, it's the best I could do with what I had. My girlfriend said it kind of looks like bro star and that I should go with that, but uh, we're going to stick with broster. And for anybody wondering why all these name changes, why does this dude keep changing his moniker what's the deal it's kind of confusing and annoying i apologize to you but uh as for a brief explanation i want my channel to be about unity and that's part of the message i want to convey not only is it about you know apartment maintenance and tools and gear and all that stuff but it's also about unity amongst tradespeople. And I'm trying to fight a stigma, a cliche. I want to just punch through that wall and preach unity, hence the brotherhood. And that's all I got, you know? So we're going to roll with it for a little bit and see how it goes. I like it, and I think that's all that matters, but, yeah, it's all about the evolution of social media identity and a message that I want to convey, so, anyways, what I have for you tonight is uh, the top 10 cordless tools that I think a maintenance tech should own. Let me say that again. The top 10 cordless tools that I think a maintenance tech should invest in. Now, we're looking at this is my next purchase as far as a cordless tool. I want a cordless sprayer. 789 bucks is a lot of money to spend on on a cordless sprayer. But uh, I think it would be worth it. So that's kind of the my special mention. I'm starting off my my top ten video with the special mention, which would be that Graco cordless paint sprayer. Now, what follows is a rundown of ten tools that I believe anybody in the buildings, facilities, you know, from hospitality to industrial to apartment maintenance these are the tools in my opinion remember this it's my opinion these are tools that work for me but i've been doing this long enough to know that these tools will also benefit other people in my position i'm not and you'll see, and if you followed any of my previous videos, you'll know I'm not brand I'm not brand loyal. I'm not married to any platform, so you're gonna see a bunch of different well actually no. You're gonna see a, a pretty solid core of you know tools that are on the same platform and can be on the same platform if you really wanna try. That's a possibly a winner right there but yeah i mean these 10 tools are in like really no specific order i did try to rank them but it's so flexible and you know it's hard to rank the usefulness of tools especially ones that you use every day you know the front end the top like five they can all be switched around and and messed with. But the ass end of this, like 10 through 6, that's they're pretty much ranked in order of usefulness to me. Now, again, this is just kind of like an intro suggestion video where I'm providing ideas. 
You by no means have to agree, nor follow, nor eat, nor invest in any of this stuff. But these are tools I think will benefit some of you guys out there in the field. So check it out. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, here we go. So starting at number 10, we have the cordless transfer pump. Now, this one's a hybrid. It can run off AC. It can run off battery. But the battery, the ability to run on a battery is what makes this thing such a useful tool. I have the, well, everybody's favorite, Ryobi 18 volt version. There are other platforms that carry similar tools, items, pumps. This one was a little less expensive than others so i decided to go with it plus i have a ton of ryobi batteries kicking around so um prior to purchasing something like this i wouldn't have even given it a second thought i wouldn't have put it on any of my favorite tools list I, but now that i've used it and used it and used it to you know drain water heaters it helps with you know toilets you got to drain the tank it helps with backed up sinks and overflows and floods and standing water it's it's got its uses and it's it's quick delivery of you know from inlet to outlet it pumps quickly it saves you so much time that it has become an essential tool in my maintenance tool bag. If you're not if you're not dealing a lot with having to pump water, I wouldn't I wouldn't even bother. But if you're doing a lot or you're run into a lot of situations where you gotta move water from one place to another, man, transfer pumps are a lifesaver. Number nine would be a cordless vacuum of some sort just to clean up after yourself. And the market is flooded with all sorts of, you know, different types of vacuums, hand vacs, shop vacs, dust busters, stick vacs. I mean, every tool brand, every major tool brand basically has a handful of different types of vacuums. You can see I have decided to stick with the Ryobis. Price-wise... These are second to none. These things do their job. I have the batteries. This Milwaukee 12 volt is kind of so so. I don't use it that much. It didn't really do what I needed it to do. Um, this Evercharge, though, this one's nice for you know those situations where you have drywall dust, sawdust. You know, small item pickup. Take it with you to a job where you where you know you're going to be making somewhat of a mess, and you can just zip zip through it. You know, and you can move on to you know bigger, larger sized wet dry shop backs. This one. It has a larger capacity. It's a little more powerful. I mean a little more powerful. It's got a lot more power than that. For larger cleanup. And then. Over here in the corner you got. You know the Ryobi Devour. Which is for large debris pickup. We use it a lot when we're doing flooring to pick up, you know, pieces that we leave behind, pieces of pad and carpet, tack strips. But, you know, it's it's really good to have some source for cordless cleaning. As maintenance sacks were moving around quite a bit, going from unit to unit, job to job, and you need the ability to pick up after yourself, to leave your site as it was before you were there, you know? So whatever platform you're on, I'm sure they have a variety of cordless back options. 
It's something worth checking out, and I couldn't recommend it more. All right, moving along to number eight, we have the cordless sander. I'm not going to break it down between which is better, the sheet or the random orbit, as in my opinion and for my job, they both have an equal usefulness. They both, you know, they kind of, it's the yin and the yang of sanding. And you'll see a pattern sort of start to form here. A lot of, you'll see Ryobi, you'll see some more rigid as we get, you know, move along in the list. But just about every major brand, every major battery platform has both of these as options. I don't know about uh, Metabo HTP though. I don't think they have any sanders available. But we all know what sanders do. But we all may not be invested in a cordless one where we can just bounce from room to room to room if we're doing unit turns. For we're, whatever we're working on, we're not tied to a cord. And, you know, the, the versatility of being able to just move quickly through a unit while you're doing that wall prop makes these an irreplaceable tool. Some people still stick with sand blocks. You know, I, and I do too. For like smaller touch up singular jobs, we'll still bang out patchwork with these. But if we're doing, you know, especially with unit turns where we're prepping rooms, these will save you so much more time. And that's why they made the list. Every tool on here is basically a time saver. And uh, just the flexibility. The ability to move without a cord through your larger units. I mean, that's, that's priceless, right? At least for me it is. Check them out. Depending on what platform you're on, I'm sure they have both versions of these sanders. What about Bosch? Does Bosch have cordless sanders on the market? They have to, right? They have a little bit of everything. I just don't remember seeing a Bosch cordless sander with one of those cute nicknames. The Skinner. Or whatever. Anyways, moving on. I made the mistake of not bringing in my cordless nailers. So we're going to use this cordless compressor as our focal point in stating that, you know, cordless pneumatic tools are super important, not only in apartment maintenance, but to basically, well, not basically, but they're useful. I won't go too far into it. Not being, not having to be tied to that hose. With your cordless nailer, man, that is such a great feeling. You can just run free doing whatever it is you're doing. But with this one, it does have the singular port. You can inflate, you can, you know, clean off parts, and you can run basically any nailer off this. You're not going to do a lot of framing with it. I mean, I wouldn't recommend that at all. But smaller pin nailers, staplers, brads, you'll get the job done. The runtime on this, as long as you have either larger capacity packs plugged in, or, you know, it can run on one. I don't recommend it. I recommend getting two bigger batteries and just letting this bad boy hum. And you'll get some work done. I mean... A compressor isn't as important as the cordless nailers to me, but again, I'm just using this as a focal point, so I'm not just standing here making hand motions. But yeah, check out some uh, some cordless nailers. They're expensive, but they're worth every penny in the long run. Trust me. Number six on the list 
would be to have now we all have we all have our flashlights so that would be redundant to call our flashlights cordless lighting number six is large area cordless lighting or like a larger capacity cordless there's a lot of lights like these on the market leds that just dominate a room will get you I mean you can't really tell the brightness levels of these but because it's daylight but cordless lighting offers exactly that you want to light up a dark space you need to paint your units deeper into the night as it as it grows dark or whatever you're underneath the sink and you need you need something there's a power outage i mean at home at work high capacity cordless lighting is a, another irreplaceable tool and again and i keep repeating it every brand has their own i chose rigid because i have a ton of rigid tools i like the style this one's actually a hybrid you can plug it in this one you can remove from the base and carry with you. It's a little bulky for EDC, but for under cabinet work, under sink work, even in uh, like a unit like that needs paint at night, it'll complement this one remarkably. You can't go wrong with any brand. Everybody's moved on to LEDs. So depending on what platform you're on look into their lighting systems there's just a ton of options out there and it's better to be in the light than in the dark you know look into it if you haven't already cordless lighting at number six and we are at number five with rotary tools grinders cutoff tools now, I've grouped them together because I feel they're sort of different versions of each other from a finesse tool to a, a better handling tool to an all-out power. But you could subtract this one and survive. These could be standalone tools. You know, we could make a subcategory. But the, the cordless rotary tool... It's a great tool to invest in just because it, it has a lot of options as far as cutting, polishing. You can drill, you can sand, you can get into areas that not a lot of other tools get into to, to cut or, to, you know, just to work on no matter what you're doing. And the, the ability to pop it in your tool bag and make it an EDC tool makes it a little more appealing to me. Now, it doesn't have the power of an 18 volt angle grinder by any means, but. For smaller, everyday tasks and the ability to keep it in your tool bag, look into some cordless rotary tools. And, you know, that said, needing more power, needing the ability to, you know, abrasive sand or polish or cut some heavy-duty shit, Get yourself an 18 volt angle grinder. I have three of them and I keep different wheels on each one. There's a this one has the cutoff wheel. I have one that has a heavier duty blade on it, and then one has a like abrasive sanding blade on it right now. And that's just easier for me to go in and grab the tool. Oh, I'm gonna sand today. Instead of messing around with your spanner wrench and changing out the blade. Call me lazy. Call me what you will. That's what works for me. I mean, you guys might not do the, the jobs that require something as heavy duty as a grinder. But you might as well snag one. You never know. Same with this. You know, you just never know. And it's better to have than to have not, right? So yeah, cutoff tools. Check them out. A lot of brands. There's a lot of brands that have grinders. Not too many. Actually, the more I think about it, there are quite a few cordless rotary tools on the market. 
So look into it. I strongly recommend those. At number four, and with an honorable mention, we have the reciprocating saw. Whether it's a two-handed, larger capacity saw or a you know a smaller plumbing copper finesse saw or you know one of the one-handed guys the cordless reciprocating saw is this could be higher up on the list because these tools come in super handy and the honorable honorable mention will be you know the circular saw circular saws are just as important as you know having your recip I just don't use one as much as I do the recip saw being in apartment maintenance we have a bunch over here in the dark there's a cordless M12 we have the rigid we have Makita and Ryobi I mean they have their use they're they could be on this list they could be number one in some people's eyes but for me at number four and what I need on like a daily basis the recip saw is one of the most irreplaceable tools out there especially one-handed I've moved towards you know from higher demand demo type saws to just powerful finesse compact ability I would look into this atomic guys I love this freaking saw but whatever your needs whatever you're doing whatever you're cutting grab a recip saw definitely irreplaceable all right we have hit the top three now these top three can be you know shuffled around and replaced and one can be moved to number one I mean, this is all depending on what you do on a daily basis. But for me, at number three, we have the cordless drill driver. Especially in a 12-volt capacity. These are everyday carry tools. These are what gets us through a lot of our jobs. I mean, we... We'd be naked without a drill as maintenance tax, especially a hammer drill. I mean, what can I say about drills? You guys, you guys all know that the importance, and this might be your number one. For a lot of people, a drill driver will probably be their number one pick. Like I said, for me... And what I do on a daily basis, these rank third out of ten. And it all depends on what you do. Again, if you're going into a lot of block or concrete slab or doing any type of masonry drilling, get a freaking hammer drill. I recommend probably an 18 volt, but 12 volts will get you through some of the lighter duty stuff. As far as everyday everyday work 12 volt drill driver is the way to go a lot of guys still carry 18 volt I didn't bring out my bigger 18 volt stuff what do we got I think over here we just have the Ryobi but if you're if you carry one every day if, if a drill driver is a part of your EDC I think for me the smaller the better and if you do your research, you'll find that a lot of these can handle a lot more work than is expected. So number three, your drill driver. Number two, caffeine. You need something to keep you going all day long. But in reality, number two for me is the cordless oscillating multi-tool or OMT these tools are just absolute lifesavers as far as versatility ability and you know portability usually well not usually not anymore 
But prior, I would carry one with a sand pad attached and one with like a metal cutting or multi-purpose blade attached. As you know, they they handle so much work. Cutting your jams, cutting, you know, nail heads, sanding tight corners. There's there's just so much work. And that's why they for me they bumped ahead of the drill driver. There's there's just so much these can do. Cutting through tile. Cut, uh, I won't even list all their abilities because I'm pretty sure you all know what a multi-tool is capable of. But these are both 12 volt. I have a couple 18 volt, but I find as a you know as a maintenance tack, these these handle everything I need. I don't need an 18 volt OMT to cut through drywall. Or to cut down the heads of nails, or to sand my window sills, or just a quick spot. I don't need all that. 12 volts handle. These two 12 volts handle the load of my work effortlessly and elegantly, and I can't recommend. This one, the Makita is more of a finesse tool. It's not as powerful as the Bosch. I have a rigid 12 volt that is a beast. The multi heads on it. That could be another honorable mention, but we won't even get into that right now. We'll focus on these two. This one's also brushless. And it's just a little more powerful, so it handles the bulk of my cutting needs. Either way, though, I mean. If you're going to invest, and it, it all depends on what platform you're into. If you're on a 12-volt platform and an 18-volt platform, get both. If you're on, I mean, I, I guess most of you will probably lean towards an 18-volt just because of the, the upstroke and power, which I completely understand. But for me, if I'm putting in another a new junk box, if I'm putting, just cutting through drywall, just cutting through, you know, copper pipe or... Whatever it is I'm cutting, I, I haven't run into any issues with a 12 volt. So just think about that. They're a little less expensive. And if you're already invested in a 12 volt line, go get one right now. The OMT at number two. It should be no surprise that the impact driver is sitting pretty at number one. Now I could shuffle these 18 volts off to the side and just say, hey, 12-volt impact drivers are number one because I really feel that way about 12-volt impact drivers. But I know a lot of you carry these 18 volts still on a daily basis, so we're giving credit where credit is due. But I think as a maintenance tech, you could get away with just having an impact driver with a variable speed trigger or speed controls or both and that would handle everything you need now these come these come in combos quite often so it's and they do complement a drill well but you don't with the advent of quarter inch you know hex drill bits and whatnot they don't need the drill and with the speed controls, you can dial in your torque, your power, whatever you want to call it, and be good. And they fit in your tool bag. You can tuck them away. If you latch them, if you take advantage of the belt clip, they won't weigh you down. They do have the ability to do your finer fastening as well as drive home just about anything you throw at it, depending on what you're doing. And again, that's where 18 volt ones come in. They can hand or handle the heavier duty, the lags, the construction screws. But if you don't have one, and I'm sure a lot of you have jumped on the impact driver wagon. It's kind of hard not to. But if you don't have one, there you go. That's the number one tool I believe a maintenance tech should have. You may disagree, you may feel that they 
should sit further back on the list and not be number one, and that's cool. I said, this is just me. This is how I feel. These are the cordless tools that get me by. And I wanted to share them with you guys. As, you know, it works for me. You might not be familiar with some of these. You may be on the verge of making a dive or jumping into a platform and, you know, kind of feeling out what tools you're going to want to include in that. So here's some ideas. Take it as you will. But those are my top 10 tools, cordless tools, that a maintenance tech should own. Thanks for watching, guys. Be good. Be well. Take care of yourself out there. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.